Good afternoon and welcome everyone. We are so excited to welcome you here to the beautiful UMass Boston campus today. I'm Jessica Whiteley and I am Senior Associate Dean within the College of Manning, the Manning College of Nursing and Health Sciences. We have a wonderful program for you today with distinguished guests and very importantly, we're here to celebrate our amazing students. I'm here with Gordia Bannister who has been the is the current leader of the CLCDN, and she has been the leader since its inception. Gordy. Thank you. So welcome again, everyone, and we are beyond excited and delighted to have you here this afternoon. The Clinical Leadership Collaborative for Diversity in Nursing, and you'll hear us having shortened it to the CLCDN, has its roots in a visionary collaboration that began in 2007 when UMass Boston's former dean, Dean Greer Glazier, and the former chief nursing officer, Dr. Jeanette Ives Erickson, and the CNO Council of Partners, which is now MGB, sat down and decided that they needed to think about the workforce of the future. And I'm also delighted to say that these two people Dr. Glazier and Dr. Ives Erickson are here with us today. <laughs> they shared a vision that was to support diverse UMass Boston nursing students through the end of their bachelor's degree, through licensure, and then into registered nurse positions at MGB. From there, Dr. Gordia Bannister and Drs. Mary and Winfrey took the lead into this uh, wonderful program that they nurtured and they built. They led the path for this current expansion that we're here today to celebrate. So we are going to be doing a number of things with our distinguished guests. I would also like to just recognize a couple of people on our team. We have MJ Ryan, who has been tirelessly advocating for us within the MGB system. And then also on our core steering team, we have Dr. Suha Balut. And Colleen Moran. And Gabby Eshelman, who is jack of all trades in the back. So it is now my great pleasure to introduce to you Ruti Tashera. She is one of our shining, outstanding, spectacular CLCDN <laughs> alums. She's going to share a little bit of information with you and a video. Welcome, Ruthie. Good afternoon, everyone. As Dr. Bannister mentioned, my name is Ruthie Teixeira. I am a nurse practitioner at Brigham Women's Hospital. Um, I'm also UMass. CLCDN graduate, class of 2018, Family Nurse Practitioner Program. I'm the current CLCDN mentor, and I'm honored to give back to the program that helps, has helped me shape to who I am today as a profession um, nurse practitioner. As you can see in my professional timeline graph, in 2015, after 15 years of nursing, working as a clinical staff nurse, I decided it was time to advance professionally. Although I was not sure how I would do this, at the time, I was with a family with two small children. I enrolled at UMass Boston with the awareness that I was in for a strenuous three years, both financially and academically. I was fortunate to have been cued by a classmate who was already a CLCDN fellow about the program. I applied and I was accepted. The support that the program provided me through the three years of my graduate studies was monumental. From the academic support, professional development, seminars, self-marketing, resume building strategies, board preparation, and financial support are what helped me uh, succeed and propel to the finish line by graduating 2018 and passing the boards. As I was preparing for today, I came across this quote, success is where preparation and opportunity meet. This spoke to me as it equates to the efforts of UMass Boston CLCDN program and MGB partnership. As you'll see in the upcoming video, there are common variables in between the CLCDN program and um, the CLCDN mentors and their uh, current students and former students. Barriers in achieving higher education, but with programs such as CLCDN in partnership with MGB, those barriers can be overcome. 
In addition, the other benefits is to foster diverse nurse work, nursing working force to mirror the community of Boston. Enjoy the video. The CLCDN stands for the Clinical Leadership Collaborative for Diversity in Nursing, a partnership between MGB and UMass Boston. Back in 2007, the Chief Nursing Council, and it's a council that has all the chief nursing officers from across the system, they had done an analysis really looking at the nursing workforce and looking at the diversity of the nursing workforce. It was very clear the system needed to be proactive about really diversifying the workforce and what we needed to do. The partnership between UMass Boston College of Nursing and Health Sciences and MGB really is a win-win situation. MGB is trying to diversify their nursing workforce and UMass Boston is one of the uh, most diverse campuses in the New England area. We have 45% of our students who identify to be of diverse backgrounds. It was just this beautiful partnership that we came together to try to diversify the nursing workforce by creating opportunities for the nursing students. Patients get into the hospital system, they look around and if they don't see somebody who looks like them, the first impression is they may not understand what I'm going through or they may not understand what I can and cannot do. A lot of times that creates distrust between the patient and the healthcare system and the nurses are representing the healthcare system. They're there by the bedside and when patients trust their nurses, they're gonna then listen to what they have to say, comply with the healthcare education they're provided. They're gonna want to take care of themselves. I grew up in Haiti and I came to the US when I was 10 years old. I did not speak English when I got here. I've had to overcome this language barrier. What spoke to me about the CLCDN mission was the fact that it wanted to increase how we saw diversity in the nursing field to allow patients to have somebody they could relate to. That mission really spoke to me as an immigrant. The financial aspect of the CLCDN is really important because when you look at the economics of our country, we know that people of color, as an example, have less wealth when you're going to nursing school. It's expensive. I think many diverse nurses who very much want to become nurses, that's a huge barrier keeping them from being able to go to school. I applaud the vision that MGB had, the fact that they would then pay tuition for these students. They may be married, they may have families, they may be taking care of their parents or their grandparents or other family members. So I think their economic situation is very different. Having this financial resource to support them has been exceptional. I, I really didn't have a college fund. I was paying for school and I was working full time. And I worked um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I went to school Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Soon after, you know, going into nursing school, I realized that I'm way over my head. And I reached sort of my breaking point where I thought, you know, I'm going to have to put a hold on my school and I'll work, I'll make more money, I'll save the money, and then I'll come back. I went home and I cried about it and it was just a devastating thing. And that same week is when I found out about the CLCDN. And when I finally got it, it just felt like a huge weight was like lifted off my shoulders. Knowing that the last two years of my college would be covered and not only would it be covered, I would receive stipend amount of money to pay for rent just to be able to really hone in and focus. Because there wasn't that stress of, oh, I have to pick up like three or four jobs in the summer, I was able to travel with my nursing program to Africa. It was really good for me because it allowed me to have more experiences and, um, and to kind of get like a full experience of the school um, as well as my growth there. There are opportunities where these students don't see anyone that looks and sounds like them in leadership roles or in practicing nursing positions. As an African-American nurse, when I was in nursing school, I was the only one in my class. I never had a faculty member of color until I was in my PhD program. So I never saw anyone that looked like me. Whether you're six foot three, 250 pounds, you'll find that there is a place for you in these fields. A lot of our students are first in their families to go to college. They may not have had that mentorship of how to navigate college life, but they got that through their mentors. The outcomes, matter and every single student that we've had in this program has not only graduated, they passed their boards and they are practicing as nurses. It's important to understand that if it wasn't for the program, I don't think I would just walk up to Mass General and apply for a job. I needed to, to trust 
people. I need to feel like the place would welcome me for who I am. And programs like the CLCDN facilitate that path, facilitates that journey. So I start receiving the help from the CLCDN and now 12 years later, I'm actually paying back, right? I'm donating my time, I'm participating in the program and I'm helping others by being a mentor for the program. I felt like if I didn't have that safety net, I wouldn't be here. So why not be somebody else safety net this time? The program has multiple components, including scholarship support, a nominal stipend to help them with living expenses. We assign them mentors to help guide them not only when they are students, but also in their first year after graduation. We do professional development and leadership development activities, support for the NCLEX exam to become a registered nurse, and preferential clinical placements within the MGB system. Because not only do we want them to learn our culture, we want them post-graduation to become one of our nurse colleagues. There's just so much value in this program and having the partnership between the university and the hospital really just brings the two together because you have to set a, a very solid foundation. If you wait until an organization or someone's career is formed, it's much more difficult to bring about change. I want to get into the healthcare system and have somebody who looks like me. I want to be able to feel like, you know, people are going to understand where I come from, what I'm going through, what I would like to have, without having to sit there and explain my cultural values and norms. Nurses are the most trusted profession but we're not always the most influential profession. So I wanna see these diverse nurses in leadership roles. I wanna see them becoming directors. I wanna see them becoming the chief nurse of a, of a hospital or of a system. I wanna see them in leadership roles from at the bedside all the way to the C-suite because it's really their voices that are gonna have an impact to influence change, ensuring that all voices come and are part of the table and the decision making. Hope you enjoy that video as much as we do. Next, we're going to invite the Chancellor to the stage, Chancellor Marcelo Juarez Orozco. Will be. <laughs> will be giving remarks, and then he will be also uh, welcoming our distinguished guests, Chancellor. Good, after, good afternoon, thank you, Jessica, and welcome to UMass Boston. My name is Marcelo Suarez Orozco, and I have the great honor and responsibility to serve as Chancellor of Boston's public research university. I am delighted to be here as we open a new chapter in our partnership with Mass General Brigham a partnership to enhance the clinical leadership for diversity in nursing program at our Manning College of Nursing and Health Sciences. This is a happy occasion because it is a day to celebrate a partnership and to imagine the many ways it will touch individual lives and democratize our public health system here in our city of Boston and in the Commonwealth for years to come. First, I want to recognize our distinguished guests, all of whom we'll, he we'll be hearing from shortly. I am very proud to welcome Mayor Michelle Wu, Mayor. <laughs> welcome to your public research university. Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones. <laughs> HHS Regional Administrator, Everett Hanford.
UMass President Marty Meehan, Thank you, boss. <laughs> and UMass Board of Trustees Chairman, Steve Karam. <laughs> My other boss. We're honored that you're here today, and we're grateful for your support and leadership. Congressman Stephen Lynch was to be with us today, but last minute change in the U.S. House calendar required him to fly to Washington. I want to express our heartfelt gratitude to the Congressman for his tremendous dedication to UMass Boston. In our first conversation years ago, he committed to me that he would work and we would together endeavor to make UMass Boston the crown jewel of the UMass system. And for those who know Congressman Lynch, and I've learned that everyone in Greater Boston knows Congressman Lynch, you know he's a man of his word. Thanks to our Congressman, UMass Boston's Manny College of Nursing and Health Sciences received a transformational $3 million in federal funding to build what will be Massachusetts' first digital home care simulation lab. This will enable us to better educate, train our amazing nursing students in the types of settings that will replicate where care will be delivered once they are working as chief nurses. That's what we want them to be. At Mass General Brigham and throughout our city and our commonwealth. Due to similar legislative scheduling matters, both Speaker Mariano and State Representative Don Hunt are unable to be here with us. We want to thank the Speaker, Speaker Mariano, Representative Hunt, as well as Senator Nick Collins, and the entire legislature for the support of this transformational program at UMass Boston. And as I was watching the beautiful video, uh, I reflected and heard the voice of two amazing members of our community, Rob and Donna Manning, who could not be here with us today because it was Donna who told me with beauty and generosity in her heart and in her voice, I want the man in gift to get us to the day where our nurses and our patients look like one another, the foundation for trust, for a reciprocal ethic of care that is so fundamental, so fundamental to all clinical uh, interactions. The significant exp expansion of this extraordinary program was inspired by a $15 million gift from the Mannings back in 2021, the largest gift in UMass Boston's history. <laughs> to our MGB family, the good folk of that extraordinary set of hospitals. Thank you. And now, as we say in the old country, you know, mi casa es su casa. We share a casa in this beautiful, beautiful transformational endeavor. So thank you, thank you to our partners for the extraordinary vision that went into the making of this joint endeavor. Of course, 
the amazing folk in our Clinical Leadership for Diversity Nursing program, Jessica, Suha, and Ms. Bannister, of course. Thank you. Thank you for your extraordinary leadership. Thank you for setting us in the right, in the right course. The whole world knows that the last few years have been truly unprecedented, bringing to light the centrality of health and well-being as a fundamental, as a fundamental basis for the practice of democratic citizenship. We need a healthy, thriving, flourishing population for democracy to work. We know the imperative of health equity for all. The pursuit of health equity is fundamental to the mission of UMass Boston. From community health promotion to health policy work at the bench, in the lab, or at the bedside, we are at the forefront of, at once, tackling multiple pieces in the health equity puzzle. And as the only public research university in the great city of Boston, with nationally recognized nursing programs, we embrace our responsibility to educate the future healthcare providers in ways that serve our increasingly diverse and aging population. These are the two central demographic, demographic features of our, of our times. We are an ever more diverse population and we continue to uh, rapidly grow in terms of the longevity of our populations. And these are all extraordinarily, uh, extraordinary opportunities and wonderful, wonderful news. Our diverse and our aging population are central, central, uh, uh, at, at, they're at the center of, these, of the endeavors that will be uh, part of this $20 million investment, 10 million from Massachusetts General Brigham, and 10 million from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. Building on a partnership to diversify career pathways for nurses and open opportunities for our extraordinary students. UMass Boston will provide financial support for students recruited from traditional and, acceler and accelerated nursing programs to participate in this new program. Our students will be eligible for employment at the great Massachusetts General Brigham system of hospitals, creating a, a workforce development pipeline from classroom, classroom to career. The additional funding would also support the creation of a behavioral health equity certificate for program participants. Over five years, 400 students will be recruited to complete the program. From our understanding of public policy, public awareness, this collaboration helps us reflect upon, understand the complex mix of how stress, poverty, discrimination, structural racism, lack of opportunity can lead to health inequities in our communities of color. And this is important at a time when we are immersed in a polarized national conversation about the structures of racism and discrimination and our duty to look for well, the well-being of all of our communities. This is an extraordinarily important point of departure. And of course, we understand that there's enormous work to be done in the, in the, in the years ahead. We must eliminate health disparities that put people of color at higher risk for so many diseases. And in part, this entails promoting diversity in nursing and encouraging diverse students to move again into leadership positions. Our Clinical Leadership for Diversity in Nursing program is positioned to do exactly that good work. Our investment in the program underscores our commitment to the city of Boston and to our commonwealth. 
It is premised on UMass Boston's dedication to being engaged in a university driving world-class scholarship and professional practice into promising areas of needed impact. And it places MGB and UMass Boston at the center of a vital integrated network of care. This is a bold move, but bold is the zeitgeist we need for the times. Indeed, this partnership is exactly what we need at this time. And nothing would make me happier than to see more of our fellows graduate from UMass Boston and work to advance health equity at our partner hospital. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce the leader of our five campus University of Massachusetts system, President Marty Meehan. President Meehan has served in his role since 2015 after previously serving as Chancellor of UMass Lowell for eight years and as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives for 14 years. On behalf of my colleagues here at the Boston campus and across the UMass system, we thank you, Mr. President, for being with us today and for all you do for our Commonwealth and for higher education, public higher education in the great state of Massachusetts. Thank you very much, Marcelo, for that kind introduction that was obviously written for someone on my payroll somewhere. But uh, I'm delighted to be here. I do have to say, um, I may have hired Marcelo, but for him to say I'm his boss, it's, uh, it's a little stretching. As all of you know, in academia, it's hard to really say anyone is anyone else's boss. But I'm delighted to be here, delighted at the job that Marcelo and his team have done here at UMass Boston over the last uh, three or four years. You know, in the last 25 years, I don't think I've read a report or a study on the quality of health care that didn't say that number one factor in improving the quality, uh, the quality of health care is nursing, the quality of nurses. It's an undisputable fact. So if we're going to deal with the crisis we have in our health care system, we have to focus on nursing, nursing programs, excellence in nursing, diversity in nursing. And at UMass, we have five great nursing programs across our system on all of our campuses, including the medical school. But I'm going to tell you something. There isn't a nursing program in this Commonwealth or in New England or in the northeastern part of the country that isn't more important to the question of having diverse nurse workforce than UMass Boston is. Now, Marcelo mentioned Robin uh, Donner Manning. Uh, Rob was the chairman of our board. He was getting ready to leave the board, and he made a commitment, and Donna made a commitment, that they were going to do something for the entire university system. They're both UMass Lowell grads. A donor graduated from UMass Lowell's nursing program. The very first commitment that they made was $15 million to this nursing pro program at UMass Boston. And part of the reason why they did it was because Donna Manning was an oncology nurse at Boston Medical Center for over 20 years. And she got to see a lot in that role. And she was so moved by the importance of getting people of color into positions of power right across the board, but in particular nursing. Everyone deserves a quality health care, and we should be alarmed and ashamed at the disparity with health care in this country. We can do better. And one of the ways we can do better is by making commitments like this. I'm delighted with this program. I also want to say that uh, Mass General Brigham, the, the, having UMass associated with one of the greatest health care delivery institutions in the world is a great honor for us. We are delighted to work with UMass Brigham. Uh, we are delighted to move forward in any way we can 
to deal with the challenges we have to deal with. But I just want to say what an honor it is for UMass Boston to be associated with one of the finest hospitals in the world. People come from all over the world to come to Mass General Brigham. And we treasure this partnership, and we look forward to working with you in the years to come. I also want to thank Mayor Wu, not just for her commitment to UMass Boston over her years as, uh, in his tenure as mayor, but uh, we have a project here at UMass Boston called Dorchester Bay City. And she's been very, very helpful in that process. And when it's completed, it's going to transform UMass Boston. We're going to end up with internships and co-ops that are available for our students so that they can achieve their full potential. They're going to have the same kind of opportunities here at UMass Boston that folks have that are on the other side, that go to school on the other side of the Charles River. So I thank the mayor for her commitment to help UMass Boston in any way she can. And I thank all of you for being here. Now I have to introduce my boss. Um, the Board of Trustees is a volunteer position, and Steve Karam has been the chair of our Board of Trustees for a while now, but he commits himself to every campus. He works hard. He doesn't get any money for it, but he has a passion because he sees the transformational impact that UMass has on the Commonwealth and beyond. Please welcome our outstanding chairman, Steve Karam. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, when Marcelo said that his uh, two bosses were here today, I found it interesting. I've come to meet with Marcelo prior to being chair and uh, as chair, and when I get a start time for his events, they're usually about an hour earlier than everyone else gets here. I go into his office, I get my marching orders for the week, and so as eloquent as Marcelo can say them, so appreciate it. And you always make sure to walk me by the quad, gives me the progress, and uh, it's looking beautiful, and for your inauguration, it's going to be a spectacular day. Well, well deserved. Uh, I just want to add my congratulations and offer my gratitude to all of those who have made this partnership possible and who are now working to expand it. Uh, the University of Massachusetts Boston could have found no better partner than Mass General Brigham. While they are not present, I especially want to thank Rob Manning and Donna, not only as my predecessor, but my true, true good friend. Uh, their generosity knows no bounds, uh, and we can never thank Rob enough and Donna. Uh, Rob, Donna, and Marty all know firsthand the power of a UMass education and how it changes the trajectories of a person's life. Uh, I know as well uh, from my father's experience in UMass, and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the opportunities that UMass gave him. Uh, this is what this initiative is all about, opening a pathway for people to realize their dreams of becoming a nurse who can use their talents to help heal the injured and sick. Helping people reach their full potential, often against long odds, is what UMass Boston and the UMass system is all about. This partnership can, uh, this partnership uh, and the work you are going to do uh, is, is truly inspirational, and I can't thank you enough from the Board of Trustees. Thank you so much, Chairman Karam and, and President Miam. <clears throat> Cities with visionary executives are thriving. And at a time when the fragile edifice that is the practice of democratic citizenship in our country and beyond, it is in cities today that democracy thrives. And Boston is a global leader in so many ways because of our mayor. When it comes to addressing climate change, public health, and economic inequality, three of the biggest challenges of our times, Boston has, in Mayor Wu, 
a way of showing the world how cities can lead with an ethic of care and an ethic of responsibility. Mayor Wu shares something very special with so many of us in our campus, so many of us in this room, and thousands of UMass Boston students. The immigrant experience, the value of diversity, and the commitment to a hopeful and positive change. Mayor Wu is a valued and dedicated partner for UMass Boston, and it is a privilege to work alongside her in advancing Boston Public Schools, behavioral health, and climate resiliency, and a more just, a more equitable Boston. It was an honor for me to introduce Mayor Wu when she chose to give, to give her first commencement address to the UMass Boston class of 2022. And it is an even greater honor for me today to introduce our mayor to reflect on this extraordinary endeavor by two of your city's most iconic institution. I give you Mayor Wu. Thank you so much and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, to both of the, the chancellor's bosses. Maybe I could borrow him to introduce me wherever I go. <laughs> what a generous and kind introduction. And thank you all to uh, all of the leaders in the room who have made this very important collaboration possible. We are so grateful from the entire city of Boston to be able to hold up yet another example of what leadership means when it gets breathed into real form, into real people and families and impact. And so thank you to Chancellor Suarez Orozco and everyone at UMass Boston. Thank you to the entire UMass system, all of our partners at the city, state, and federal level, Mr. Chair and the, and the Board of Trustees, and all of the faculty and students and alums who are here uh, on behalf of this partnership at the university, but also at Mass General Brigham. Um, I, how many people who live, how many people in this room live in the city of Boston? Okay, so I probably have the most of my bosses in the room, right? <laughs> a couple dozen of my bosses here and, and everyone else I think falls under the group that we fight for every day. All those who live, work, come to visit our city, we see as truly trying to set the course for what it looks like to chart a sustainable future that includes everyone. That means being the best city for families of every generation. And that means being a city where all communities, all families, all residents are living healthy, long, fulfilled lives and being in community together. There's no more prepared and well-resourced city to be able to do this. I think the entire world understands this when it comes to healthcare and the, the innovation that the world needs right now, all eyes are on Boston. This is a city where President Biden came and introduced his Cancer Moonshot Initiative. This is a city where one of the, the life-saving COVID vaccines across the entire planet uh, originated and was dispersed from. This is a city where uh, now our country's newest initiative around healthcare innovation with the ARPA-H uh, endeavor will be based, I'm counting Cambridge right now as Boston, I don't do that all the time, but <laughs> in the greater Boston region. And this is a city where we are showing what it means to have a workforce that reflects our community and to have a workforce that is tapping into the best, most prepared talent from our community who often just need that same level of access that others have had for generations. Our goal in the city of Boston is to create that kind of partnership across every part of our education system, touching every part of our community. And so it has already been such an honor to partner with UMass Boston and Mass General Brigham on initiatives related to the Boston public school system, 
uh, initiatives related to our workforce development programs within our uh, community, community efforts and, and community engagement programs. We know that it makes a difference when, you know, since the founding of the Cape Verdean Nurses Association, so many lives have been changed. And I, he I, I hear this knocking on doors throughout the community or spending time at, uh, you know, over this last weekend, we did 16 hours of the mayor's enchanted trolley tour doing tree lightings across every neighborhood. And I get just a moment sometimes with our families to hear what's on their minds, to hear what their hopes and fears and dreams are. And over and over again in this moment, there's both a sense of continued struggle and pressure from all the forces, from a very, very difficult and turbulent time we're coming out of and continuing to live in, but also such a sense of hope and excitement that we are beginning to see the fruits blossom from the ways in which we're more connected to each other. And so the more that we can be a partner in helping to support or create or um, implement any of the partnerships that bring together our city's major anchor institutions, and more importantly, our city's community members, please count us as the strongest possible champion that we could be. Thank you all so much for your efforts, and thank you for what you do. Thank you, Mayor Wu, for, for your uh, reflections. And again, thank you for all you do for our city. A couple of weeks before the historic and over, overwhelming victory in 2022, I hosted Governor Maura Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll here at UMass Boston. And do you know what they really wanted to see during their visit? The Manning College Center for Clinical Education and Research. So they could learn. They could learn more about the leading role UMass Boston is playing for healthcare workforce development. And the, the governor would know about this. Her mother was a nurse, I understand. I've continued to speak with the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the senior cabinet members about the essential work we're doing alongside MGB in healthcare workforce development. And this is a topic very dear and near to our next speaker, our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren. Jones. I've had the privilege of meeting with Secretary Jones many times, and she has a sharp, sharp understanding of both the needs of the labor force and you must Boston's a special role as our public research university in helping her fulfill her duties. It is a pleasure to introduce Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Jones. Secretary Jones, please. Thank you, Chancellor Suarez Orozco, for that warm introduction and certainly the, the invitation to join everyone today for this wonderful celebration. I appreciate the opportunity to also be joined by President Meehan and, and certainly Mayor Wu. Um, as I think about why we're here, um, as the Chancellor was just uh, reflecting on uh, the power of, of nurses and why we are building the pathways, I actually thought about my own personal story. My grandmother was a nurse and in Brooklyn and she found her path through a city initiative in the city of Boston with the city's public health institution. Imagine this was decades ago, um, a woman of color coming into the nursing workforce. And so to know that the city, um, Mass General Brigham and UMass Boston are doing exactly that here in 2023 as we think about 
the investments we need to make today for our future workforce, and to know there's been so many success stories to date, I just look forward to being able to celebrate so many more of these types of stories and impact because I know it can make a huge and meaningful difference uh, for individuals, for families, and certainly for our workforce. Um, I've now been in my role as Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development for several months, and um, coming into this role back in January, I knew how important workforce development would be um, for the Healy Driscoll administration. It was no doubt um, why we need to be caring about workforce. But as we think about our workforce strategy, I also knew that preparing, developing, retaining our healthcare workers would be so paramount to the work of the Healy Driscoll administration. And I realized, how can I do this as, as secretary? How can I get this work, this, so, this important work done? And it was without a doubt that I knew I needed to do this in partnership with community collaborators and institutions like UMass Boston, employers like Mass General Brigham, and that's exactly what we are doing. Um, as we think about our workforce strategies, I know that we need to build that collaborative effort, and a lot of this work happens on the local and regional level. As much as we can play a role at the state level to build a plan to influence a strategy, we cannot institute any of this work without our local and regional partners. So I appreciate the fact that we are lifting up more partnerships like we're celebrating today um, to be able to build the pathways uh, for our nurses, as well as our diverse nurses um, and our future workforce that we need. Um, I also know that as we think about how to drive competitiveness throughout the Commonwealth, um, we have to think about certainly affordability, accessibility, and how to get this done to unlock more opportunities for our untapped talent. And at the heart of this strategy is truly thinking about our people, uh, the people who are studying in our K through 12 institutions, the people that are pivoting in their career, trying to find a second or a third chance into pursuing a meaningful career, and most certainly our students that are in our institutions like UMass Boston, thinking about how can they find their path and to be able to partner with a leading employer like Mass General Brigham is so important to the recipe that we need to continue to invest in and support in building the workforce that we need. So I, I appreciate that I can stand here really just to lift up the important work that's already been done, but certainly would like to make sure that we maintain a partnership so that we can take these great examples that we're celebrating today find ways to certainly dial it up here in Boston, but also make sure that other regions see best practices and opportunities to do exactly what's being done at this public institution here, knowing that we have UMass throughout the Commonwealth and ways that we can also lift up similar pathways for more, um, for more of our workers. At the state level, we also know that we have to invest in many different parts of the pie to ensure success, which is why we appreciate through our Workforce Skills Cabinet that we are investing in opportunities to, to complement the great work that's being done here as an example, ranging from loan forgiveness through investments through our Health and Human Services Secretariat for nurses and others in healthcare as they pursue and continue their careers, um, providing tuition support for nurses that are enrolled in our community colleges, our 15 community colleges across the Commonwealth, and promoting and investing in registered apprenticeship, where we see that as a proven model, not only in the building trades, but as we think about emerging and growing and needed industries like healthcare, where we can take that technical and on-the-job training to prepare medical assistants, CNAs, and so many more um, occupations needed in the healthcare and behavioral health space. We also know, though, that investing in our students and ensuring a pathway, an immediate pathway for, in, for career is so important. And so I really just end on this note, the spirit of collaboration. Again, I appreciate the Chancellor extending the invitation to join for today and really just wanna make sure that we can be a partner as we think about our workforce plan, what our agenda is going to continue to be to lift up programs like this and to ensure that we are paving more pathways for our diverse untapped talent that can become our needed and critical talent here in Massachusetts. So thank you for the opportunity to be here today.
Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Jones, for your inspiring reflections. Last but not least, I'm so happy to welcome our final speaker representing partners at all levels of government on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration. Is our Health and Human Services Regional Administrator, Everett Hanford. We, we had the opportunity to welcome President Biden to Columbia Point in the beautiful location of his cancer moonshot, <laughs> the cancer moonshot uh, uh, event uh, over next door at the presidential library. And it was amazing to, to have a, a number of our students uh, interact with the president and engage with him on the extraordinary, the extraordinary announcement he made that day. The Biden administration has provided historic funding levels for so many critical areas, but of the many transformative investments and programs they've unveiled, one stands out, and it is apropos of why we're here today. The extraordinary, the historic, the unprecedented commitment and support for equity. There are now specific grants and funding opportunities geared towards leveling the playing field for minority serving institutions like UMass Boston that did not exist until now. To bring greetings on behalf of the administration, I welcome our HHS Regional Administrator, Everett Hanford. Good afternoon, everyone. I bring you greetings from my office where I have the privilege to serve as the Region 1 Director for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, which encompasses the six New England states and the 10 federally recognized tribes. Thank you, President Marty Meehan and Chancellor Orozco for, uh, and the entire UMass faculty and staff for affording us your generous hospitality and opening up your doors. Uh, thank you to all of our local, state, and federal partners here uh, for your steadfast leadership. Uh, thank you to all of our partners at Mass General Brigham for your unwavering support. And most importantly, Thank you to all of our attendees and our students here today to celebrate this momentous investment. I'm not gonna mince my words. We have a health workforce crisis and it needs to be addressed. We have a shortage of doctors and nurses currently practicing. We have a lack of psychologists and counselors to address the rising rates of substance use disorder around this country. We have a scarcity of midwives and pharmacists and professional caregivers. The health workforce in and of itself is already straining to meet the nation's public health demands. And when the pandemic arrived, the situation became even more urgent. For the last several years, our entire nation has witnessed firsthand the dedication and the fortitude of our healthcare workforce. That extraordinary commitment our frontline workers made also took its toll. And now we're facing real challenges. I know everyone here under the sound of my voice understands the importance of a healthy and safe workforce, but unfortunately not everyone does. Health workers play a vital role in our lives. They're who we turn to when we're sick or when we're injured. They're who we turn to when we visit for our annual screenings or to make sure that our health is on track. They help care for our children, families, 
in our aging community. They promote, they protect, and they improve the health of our communities. And most importantly, they keep the American economy going. At the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and across the Biden-Harris administration, we are tackling this crisis head on. We understand that the key to expanding access to high quality health care is by first addressing and possessing a well-trained and well-supported health workforce, which is why in July, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services announced the Health Workforce Initiative, which will explore ways to improve health workforce pipelines, expand and recruit and retention, and deliver career advancement opportunities with a strong focus on equity. We've improved the Nursing Workforce Diversity Program, which was created to assist students from disadvantaged backgrounds through the educational pipeline to become registered nurses. And we certainly can't forget President Biden's American Rescue Plan, which provided over $1.1 billion for community health outreach and health education workers, the largest ever one-time investment in the nation's community health workforce. Our work, however, is just beginning. This crisis was in the years of making, and it's not going to be solved overnight. But the partnership between UMass and Mass General Brigham will certainly make a difference in the lives of the people who study and train to become nurses and get quality jobs in the healthcare industry, in the communities where students go to work, bringing their own lived experiences and their understanding of everything that goes into promoting health and well-being. We're going to continue to do our part, but we also want to be your partner along the way. As you continue to come up with innovative ways to address the workforce crisis, we want to continue to uplift programs such as the one today and like this partnership as a model that others can use across this country. I'm proud to be here with you all today on behalf of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and Secretary Javier Becerra uh, and the Biden-Harris administration. I certainly want to thank you for all the work that you all are doing and will continue to do and for your commitment to the health and well-being of your community. Thank you all. All right, thank you everybody for eating so quietly while we try to listen to these wonderful and inspiring uh, talks that we're having here today. I hope you are as inspired as I am. We are now going to hear from some of the leadership from UMass Boston as well as Mass General Brigham. The first person that I would like to introduce is the provost, Joseph Berger, who will be here in just a second. <laughs> provost Berger. <laughs> Good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be here and real honor as the Chief Academic Officer for UMass Boston to be able to be a part of this event, an event that brings together a rich history from the past as a foundation for an important moment right now that is a springboard to a better future for UMass Boston, for Mass General Brigham, for our students, current and future, for the community, for the great city of Boston. Nothing could be more important than coming together to merge a commitment to inclusive excellence in education, in health, in workforce development, and in community development. You know, those of you who know me know that one of my um, favorite quotes, right, is Sir Isaac Newton. When asked how he'd been able to see farther than others, it, he answered, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. So I do want to begin by recognizing that while this is an incredible partnership between two cornerstone foundational institutions here in Boston, Mass General Brigham and UMass Boston, organizations don't work together. People do. 
And so I do want to recognize that we're able to be here because we are standing on the shoulders of giants. And some of them are right here with us today. And I just want to recognize the pioneers who helped make this possible through decades now, going into our second decade of work together that has allowed us to make significant contributions to healthcare here in Boston. So thank you very much. You know, here at UMass Boston, we are not just strong believers in, but we enact the principles of inclusive excellence, recognizing that we cannot provide excellence in education if we are also not inclusive. And actually, we cannot be inclusive if we're not providing the most excellent educational opportunities possible. And our partnership with Mass General Brigham brings these principles together. It's done so now for the past several years, but what I'm really excited about is that now we get to expand it. We know this model works. We have the evidence. The students who come here benefit from our great faculty, and we have amazing faculty here at UMass Boston. They benefit from the expertise that we find in Mass General Brigham. But our program, our communities, the clinics and hospitals that our graduate staff, the individuals who deserve more equitable and excellent health care, benefit from the students who come to this program. Our students learn from us, yes, but our students also bring the life experiences, the cultural and the linguistic wealth that make our program better. And they make our community health care services better. So the fact that we can now expand this, that we can have a bigger footprint, we can have a greater human impact through this work is laudable. And I am very, very proud to have such great colleagues who make this possible. The Manning College of Nursing and Health Sciences and our nursing programs, and particularly CLDCN, are amazing programs. We produce more nurses than any other program in the state, but we also provide, pr produce the best nurses and the best model of inclusive excellence. So now as we look into the future, we're actually just getting started. So I'm looking forward to expanding the program to more intentionally and purposefully addressing not just physical health, but behavioral and mental health. And this is more important now than ever before. So today is exciting. It builds on a strong foundation. But our responsibility to continuously improve, to make this work for the future, remains more important than ever before. And it is a responsibility that we seek. It is a responsibility that we take together. For this is, you know, I was going to say a win-win partnership, but actually it's too many wins for me to say. It's a win for UMass Boston. It's a win for Mass General Brigham. It's a win for our students. It is a win for the communities that we serve. It is a win for the city of Boston. Everybody wins here. So with that note, enjoy the rest of your lunch. Thank you for being here, and thanks for being part of this momentous occasion in which we build on the past into an even better future. Thanks so much. Next, we're going to have some representation from Mass General Brigham. I'm very honored and pleased to be able to introduce to you Anna Brown. Anna Brown is a Senior Vice President at Mass General Brigham, as well as the Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer. 
Please welcome Anna. Good afternoon, everyone. I am delighted and thrilled to be here, and thank you so much for that kind introduction. Um, I, I'm really very excited. It's been a wonderful program today, and uh, certainly recognizing this outstanding program, um, everyone who makes it possible, and of course, the amazing students participating in this program. I'd like to thank my colleagues at Mass General Brigham, um, and of course, our partners at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. I would like to also um, offer my appreciation and thanks to the government officials who've been here today um, for their investment and support of the students and this program. The need is perhaps um, so great uh, right now, evermore, um, with regard to diversity in the healthcare industry. There's a great deal happening, as we know, in the country and around the world. And to be the best healers that we can be, we need diversity in our workforce. Mass General Brigham programs like our United Against Racism initiative, the work of our Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and this partnership with uh, CLCDN, this helps us to get closer to achieving those goals. Nurses are key to the healthcare team. It's been said here, and I certainly would like to echo, that it's very important for our patients to see themselves reflected in those who are delivering care. We know it gives them confidence, that it has an impact on their willingness and their ability to share, to be candid, to feel that they're in an inclusive environment. All of that impacts their outcomes and their experiences. I've seen the benefits of, uh, of having uh, healthcare workers who reflect the communities that they serve firsthand. Um, as a former nurse myself, I know personally that this work is personal, it's important, it's complex, and it's rewarding all at the same time. Across the healthcare industry, we need, and in fact, we must have our healthcare providers at our hospitals, at our clinics, at our labs, at our diagnostics that reflect the communities where we live and serve. It is the programs like the CLCDN that help us to reflect positive change and the ability to deliver on those goals. I am absolutely thrilled and delighted um, to see these partnerships grow. I look forward to the students joining us at Mass General Brigham and I uh, want to thank you for the invitation to join today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Next, we have another leader at Mass General Brigham, Aaron Flanagan. Aaron is the Senior Vice President of Talent at Mass General Brigham and was one of the instrumental people in the expansion. So welcome, Aaron. Thank you very much. Um, it's probably pretty fitting that I am one of the final speakers in the presentation today because um, in the journey for our aspiring nurses, we hope, and it's my personal hope, that we'll be one of your last stops as you're graduating and seeking your next job. Um, so it's kind of fitting that I'm here uh, having those comments. So no one is probably more appreciative of this program and the expansion of the program than we are in the talent area at Mass General Brigham. Um, Anna talked a little bit about the importance of diversifying our nursing uh, cohorts and ultimately leading to those leadership positions. But there's also another strategic reason that we are so excited to have this really substantial expanded commitment um, through this program. And that's because we, like other healthcare organizations in the city of Boston, we were hit hard during the, the COVID pandemic. We saw such an influx of patients who needed care, and we didn't have all of the caregivers that we needed to take care of our patients. Our vacancy rates were extremely high. And even today, even though we've seen those vacancy rates come down, we're still feeling the impact of COVID. Our patients are sicker and they need more care. Care is more complex than it's ever been. And we need talented people that really understand how to deliver that care. Um, 
We invest in a whole suite. We have a large portfolio of workforce development programs. But we are so pleased for this partnership and the expansion of this partnership because this partnership with UMass Boston stands out. The students that come to us from this program stand out. The graduation rate, the retention rate of the students that come to us, how skilled they are. You really can't beat the ROI numbers that we see through this program. So we are so pleased to continue to be able to offer the opportunity to reach talented students that want to come and work at organizations like Mass General Brigham. So today we're pleased to build on the success of that program and expand it. But this partnership isn't just about training nurses. It's about strengthening our communities. And it's about pro providing the highest quality of care and building careers. And it's our hope that this program continues to create those pathways for you to continue to build exceptional, nur ex exceptional nurses and that those nurses, we hope, will find a home at Mass General Brigham where you can succeed and grow your careers even as your life changes. We have all types of patient care environments where we hope that you can come and find a home with us. So as we embark on this exciting journey together, we're not just expanding a program, we hope that we're building a brighter future for healthcare. A healthcare landscape that's enriched by nurses who not only possess those exceptional skills, but also bring a wealth of diverse perspectives and cultural understanding, which with each nurse that we train and graduate and hopefully hire through this collaboration, we're imparting knowledge and we hope to be inspiring change. Through our partnership, the CLCDN nurses will be more than just caregivers. We have seen that they already are. They are community leaders, advocates for health equity, ambassadors of compassion and understanding, and their impact extends beyond the hospital walls into the hearts of our communities for every patient. As we look ahead, I see a future where every patient feels understood, our community is better served, and our nurses feel supported and enriched in our healthcare environment. It's not just a hope, it's a commitment we're making together here today. And with the support of everyone in this room, I have no doubt that that vision will become a reality. Thank you very much for being part of this transformative journey. Hi, I'm Suha Balut. I am one of the nursing faculty and I am one of the current leaders working on the CLCDN. The CLCDN, as you've heard over and over again, is a groundbreaking initiative born out of a visionary collaboration between Mass General Brigham and UMass Boston, Robert and Donna Manning, College of Nursing and Health Sciences. And these weren't the names back then. Because in 2008, leaders, Dean Greer Glazer, and Dr. Marion Winfrey from UMass Boston <clears throat> came along and met with um, Dr. Jeanette Ives Erickson and Dr. Guardia Bannister from um, MGB, which was UM uh, Mass General Hospital back then, to have a shared vision. The goal was to address the imperative need for the increased diversity in nursing by dismantling the barriers and tailoring support to meet the unique needs of students. So thank you for the founding team, and I would like to ask them to join me up here on the stage, please. I don't want to be here alone. The program, as you've learned,
The program, as you've learned, has achieved remarkable success, and today we are gathered here to commemorate a significant expansion. But as we do that, we want to extend our sincere gratitude to the visionaries and founders um, of this exceptional program. So we want to start this expansion by honoring and recognizing our founders. Dr. Gergliezer. Gr Dr. Marion Winfrey. Dr. Jeanette Ives Erickson. Dr. Gardia Bannister. Additionally, we acknowledge that the instrumental contributions of Teresa Rodriguez, whose efforts played a crucial role in the program's success, we would also like to acknowledge her for her efforts at the beginning of the program. So again, thank you all. This program would not have been possible without you. And today's celebration is a testament to the enduring impact of their vision and the dedication to advancing diversity in nursing. Thank you. Okay, so I'm a little speechless, everybody. But those who know me know that I don't have any problems with being able to speak. Um, but now I have the distinct pleasure of recognizing uh, our CLCDN fellows, past and present. Keep in mind, everyone is not here today because they're either practicing as registered nurses, taking care of patients throughout our community. And I also understand as part of the curriculum um, some of them may be doing some of their clinical experiences right now. But we did want to recognize who was here today. So those from the 2023 class of CLCDN fellows who recently graduated and may be working or are working in our MGB institutions, would you please stand? Okay, it looks like they may be working, which is good for us. <laughs> so will the 2024 class of CLCDN fellows who will graduate next December, would you please stand? I know that there's some of them in the room. <laughs> and we want you to keep standing. So please continue standing. Then the CLCDN fellows who were recently selected from the accelerated and traditional BSN programs who will start in our program in January 2024, would you all please stand? And we want you to keep standing as well. <laughs> we also would like to thank and ask all the following to stand. Any former graduates and mentors from the CLCDN program. Um, many of these individuals have gone on as fellows to be our nurse leaders, are continuing to deliver exemplary patient care. Would you please stand? Again, former graduates and mentors from the CLCDN program, please stand. And then we would like our current mentors who are supporting our current fellows, 
our nurse leaders who have served as champions and advocates for the CLCDN program from both MGB and also our UMB faculty and staff who have supported our students, would you also please stand? So I want everyone to take a look around this room to those that are standing. This is our present and this is our future. And we just can't tell you how proud we are that you are CLCDNs. And there's more to come. So thank you all, thank you. Now you can sit down too. That was almost like a graduation moment for me where I get a little teary-eyed. Oh, we're so proud of you all. Now with some closing remarks, I'd like to introduce De Dean Bo Fernhall. He is the Dean of the Manning College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Dean. Thank you everybody for coming. I want to extend a Special thanks to MGB for extending this and making it a truly, absolutely unique and wonderful program. And of course, to the founders of this program who had an idea quite a while ago that could you ever imagine that this is where we would be today? See, true visionary. But most of all, this is for the students. Hope you realize this is all for you. To be able to put 400 new nurses from a diverse background into professional practice is a monumental task. And there are so many people that have been part of this and will be part of this to make it a reality. I couldn't thank all of you more. That is fantastic. And for the students, you have a wonderful opportunity as you move forward in your careers to make a difference in people's lives, just like this program hopefully has made a difference in yours. So as you move forward, please pay it forward and think about accepting more of our students under your supervision as they train to become professionals, well, just like you will be. It's really fantastic to have this opportunity to celebrate something that is gonna be unique, not only to UMass Boston, but to the city of Boston and our Commonwealth. And I wanna close with extending a special thanks to all the people that have worked so hard to make this luncheon work, especially to Jessica Whiteley and her team. Thank you all for coming. Quick addition to the program. We have two people who are just the lion-hearted folks who put this whole event together. And we'd really love to say thank you for all their efforts. Gabriella Eshelman. And Cheryl Reynolds. Where is Cheryl? Cheryl, there we are. Great. You will all, the students, you will hear more from Gabrielle probably than anyone, Gabby, as she goes by. She's lovely, she's awesome, tell her anything you need, she'll get it done. And Cheryl has been just incredible help to all of us, so thank you both so much.
So that concludes our program. Please feel free to stay and finish your meals if you haven't been able to do so. And once again, a big round of applause for all of our students and students to come.